about an important, another important shout out. The most important shout out. Um, I heard a song. Um, I don't know if you've noticed the change in the recaps over the last few months. They look yeah, different, wonderful. right? Yeah. Even though some of them didn't get their great, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carlos Alejandro. The same guy who took, I don't know if you've seen my new Facebook picture. Yes. This guy is like a genius. He's, like a genius. He's a genius. He's a genius. And he has ruin my life and save my life at the same time because it takes me forever to do these recaps because I'm not good at it yet, but boy, they sure look better, don't right. they? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. 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 Plus, he like colorized all the films last, color corrected all the, all the videos last month and, and he's just such a help to me in wow. so many ways. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. And I've known him for 43 years. <laughs> well, I know I knew him when I was 12, and now I know him at 55. I didn't know him in between. <laughs> kind of. A, I don't. It doesn't yeah. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, he found me on Facebook. Okay. Okay. I first met Wendy in 1991. Um, she and my husband. Mm. <laughs> um, we're doing. I think it was the first Caroline's Comedy Hour at the Seaport. And, um, and I was too shy to like really go, I, I, I think we got introduced maybe, but I was such a fan. Um, I am such a fan, and I, I was kind of tongue-tied, and, and uh, so I didn't really say hello. And then Facebook, and, and so we got to know each other on Facebook, and, and many nights late at night with Elaine Boozler and Wendy and Bob Fontenot and, and Ken Bollock and uh, just all of us. In the old days, we used to see each other's stuff on the homepage, and we would know when the other person was writing something, so that we could all, and then we would jump on each other's pages and everybody would have a thread going. It was so much fun. But anyway, that was, that was then. Um, but anyway, yes, I, 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 I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. And Wendy's first full hour comedy special, Taller on TV, is going to be debuting on Showtime on November 5th, which is next week. It is hysterical. It is brilliant. You are going to love it. When you see her mommy and her daddy, they do funny things. Anyway, it's just fantastic, and you're just going to have a ball watching it. Uh, it's fabulous, and I'm so happy for you. Okay. And, oh, and that night changed my life. Because, yeah, because I ran into Phil, and that has led to so many things. And also, I met my screenwriting partner, Michael Phillips, at your thing. Yeah, so many things happened as a result of that night. That was a magical night. That was a magical night for you and for me, because it's really all about me, isn't it? <laughs> so, anyway. Um, okay. Wendy has been doing stand-up comedy for more than 25 years. It's, she looks 12, so I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, she's been a regular on The Late Show with David Letterman and has appeared on The Tonight Show with both Johnny Carson and Jay Leno. Wow. She's appeared on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson and Jimmy Kimmel Live. She's been on, um, uh, the, she was the first one to perform stand-up comedy on The Rosie O'Donnell Show. That's crazy. Um, she's done specials for HBO, Comedy Central, and Showtime, and she's been on every single comedy show. And wherever you see a brick wall, Wendy's been there. <laughs> <laughs> and in every club, and it's opening for every single person that has ever lived. But she opened for Bob Hope. I mean, this is crazy stuff. She's open for everybody. Okay, in addition to appearing at Just for Laughs in Montreal four times and twice in the Aspen Comedy Festival, she was the recipient of the American Comedy Award for Best Female Stand-Up in 1996. And in 2010, she was clue number 23 down. <laughs> All right, I, 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 I'm done. I, I, I just, I, I love this woman, and, and I know you do too, and if you don't, you will follow her on Twitter. She is the funniest thing happening. Ladies, when you leave. A little bit out of my comfort zone, um, which is bed. <laughs> but I want to thank Vicky so much for bringing me back. She said it was my second time, and I just have to tell everybody that the first time, I don't know if I was asleep or high or whatever it was, when you asked me to do it the first time, I thought I was coming here to be on a radio show. And I show up and there are 30 women here, and Vicky goes, what are you reading? And I'm like, well, I haven't written a book, but I do have like this little book in my car that I published at Kinko's. <laughs> so I read a piece of 
piece from that. And it was an amazing experience. Um, and I also have to say that we communicated through Facebook. I started like tweeting and doing Facebook updates more than once a week after I saw John Fugelsang's updates because they were so creative. So I really owe it to you that you like inspired me. To it. It's just one of those like things, yeah. serendipity. So anyway, um, this is the first book that I've been published in. It's an anthology of women writers. It's called Make Mine a Double. It's about women who drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I have never seen this book until this morning because they sent it to Vicky's house. So this is the first time I'm actually holding a book that I'm in. So I'm like thrilled. Um, and I'm so happy to be here. My piece is called A. <laughs> I've had so many hangovers, my brain must have stretch marks. <laughs> I went to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, AA. If you know everybody there, is it just A? <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic, but I do have addictions. I thought a 12-step program would help, but I didn't want to be around people who were just like me. <laughs> I did not want to have to look at myself. So I went to an AA meeting instead. I'm not even sure they have meetings for people with my affliction. But AA was close to my house, and they had delicious coffee. <laughs> I'm addicted to ice cream. I go to a 31-step program. <laughs> One day, I get to a meeting early, and I sit behind two strangers. I hear them talking about me. She's a stand-up comedian, blah, blah, blah. And then the guy says my name, first and last. Uh, Oops. Ahem, I said, I thought this was supposed to be anonymous. <laughs> the woman blushed, took a sip of her delicious coffee. The man hemmed and hawed, then told me his name, first and last, trying to appease me and apologize. I was furious. How dare he reveal my identity? But I was also really happy that someone knew who I am always happy when somebody recognize me, recognizes me, especially if it's my mother. <laughs> That's like profound. <laughs> That's not a book. I went to AA for a while. I listened to stories from heart-wrenching to boring, mind-blowing to depressing, uplifting and unbelievable. I could relate to a lot of it. Scientists discovered the gene for alcoholism. It was the one wearing a lampshade. <laughs> been drunk four times. I don't mean karaoke drunk where you drink enough to sing MacArthur Park in a lounge in Vegas at the top of your lungs off key with your skirt hiked up. I've done that. <laughs> I mean, I've been drunk four times. Room swirling, head raising, hangover inducing, liquor consuming, no holds barred, no bars passed, bottled swig swigging the hard stuff, wasted. These are light bulb memories. <laughs> Ironic because when you're hungover you want to be, you want to be in the dark. <laughs> the kind of memories you recall vividly because of their significance, their trauma, their drama, their juiciness. The first time I got drunk was in high school. I was with my friends Beth and Debbie. We had just consumed the best onion rings on Long Island at the Landmark Diner and then proceeded to imbibe rum and coke from highball glasses at one of our houses until everything suddenly went Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> the three of us passed out on the white shag rug mat in the bathroom. I still can't eat onion rings or even smell rum to this day. This, the second time, after taping a special for HBO in San Francisco, I managed to dance the night away, drinking enough of whatever anyone was buying to the point of obliterating the rest of the weekend. What was I thinking? The third was I had been blonde for a few years, but I was having too much fun. <laughs> I wanted to dye it back to its original color, brown, but the hair person made it black, like black, black, like shoe polish black. I looked like Morticia. I downed enough Johnny Walker till I blacked out like my hair, and at some point I threw up in it. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth time,
time was my husband and I drank martinis in Manhattan at the Mayflower Hotel. It was like an episode of Sex in the City, except the sex part is blurry. <laughs> and the flashbulb in this memory was a strobe. <laughs> I'm addicted to the remote control. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, like the channel. <laughs> My favorite part of AA was at the end, where everyone held hands, when I felt like I was part of something bigger, while still being an integral link in the chain. If we were an element, we would have been Mercury. Maybe not everyone has a problem, but most of my friends are obsessed with or dependent on something, have a bad habit, or would like to change one of their self-destructive behaviors. My hope is that one day there is a meeting called HA, Humans Anonymous, or HAHA, His and Hers Anonymous. It would be run like a traditional 12-step program, but you wouldn't have to divulge your darkness you could just partake in the healing process that occurs naturally when people get there. It would be strangers in a beautiful, sunny, comfortable room, eating snacks, sharing stories, connecting, tears and flowers, a candle, laughter, hope, light, collective grief, and then relief, maybe easier sleep. I used to drink a lot, but I gave it up for rent. <laughs> <laughs> headache the next day? Is that to shrink the head from the brain, twist the ego out through shame, defiance, pain, deflation, the change of breath, self-recrimination? My soul surrenders, brake pads all worn down now, grinding metal to the asphalt. That was the last straw, the last drop. I give up, I give in, I am done. Now's another chance to begin again. Oh.